Dr. Lisa Goins, nurse practitioner, and I'm the CEO of Couture Healthcare in Hamilton, Ohio. The question is, what happens if someone trips and falls and cannot get up? They may have broken their foot, their knee, or their hip. Now, if you're out and about, and it's very possible that you could come across somebody walking in and out um, of a building, of an establishment, and you see a person down. The first thing that you want to do is call 911 and give them the correct location of where you're at. If you don't give them the correct location, it's going to take them longer to get to you. So that, that information is important. Stay on the line if necessary. Make sure that the person that is down, if they are able to respond, you give that information to the dispatcher. It is very possible with electronic medical records and uh, GPS that they can actually get the person's address if they have access with the computer system in the dispatch. So please get that information to them correctly. Also, ask the person down if they are conscious, do they have what their name is, their birthday, if they have a list of medications. Now, if they're unresponsive, make sure that they're breathing and they have a pulse. If not, you're going to have to initiate CPR. Call 911 first so that they're on the way and when they show up, they will relieve you from the CPR. Now, going back to the person who may have walked out tripped over a curb and has fallen who had fragile bones, may have broken a hip. If you think the person has broken their hip, do not get them up. You may do more damage to them. Not always, but you may. But may. Now the important thing is when a person may get up, it changes in equilibrium, they may throw up as well. So you want to make sure um, when they're not moved that pain doesn't set in and they don't hurl because nobody likes to be puked on. The other thing too is make sure that if you need to cover them up, you can put a jacket, a blanket over them, keep them comfortable, keep them talking so that they're alert. That's very important. And then when the ambulance arrives, they will move the patient. They can use a sliding board, which is a board that we put under the patient. We inch them over on it, and then we lift it up and set them on the stretcher. Or, depending on um, where the patient is, if the patient has been moved they, into a chair, they may have to do a two-person lift to get that person in the stretcher. So don't move the person if you don't have to. All right, and always call 911 and or zero for an operator. Um, worst case scenario, small towns, you may already know the fire department or the ambulance, they're volunteer, you may already have those numbers. In advance, go ahead and put those in your cell phones um, or keep um, a memory card with your medications listed on that and those important phone numbers because when accidents happen, people have a hard time recalling because pain makes you forget everything. So put all that information in there and then that way, heaven forbid, something would happen to you, you could give that information to the person who's trying to help you. Say, this is my name, this is my address, these are my medications, this is my uh, contact, emergency contact person that you can reach. And when you give an emergency contact person, make sure it's somebody that loves their phone, okay? Um, so you know this person is always going to pick up. That's the contact person that you want to have in play. And then you want to also make sure that contact person knows they are contact person and they are aware of your situation and any health problems that you have or where to get your medical records if needed, such as a patient portal. They know that, oh, her or his medication diagnosis and, and lab results are in a patient portal and there is a, a password on their memory card to get into that and this is the uh, website for that. So those are all important things to keep in mind. Again, the question was what should I do if I find somebody down, out and about, and what emergency situations, um, how do I handle that, okay? And I'd like to thank all the um, emergency responders out there, you're doing a great job. And uh, check in with your provider after you've had an emergency to update any kind of criteria. I'm Dr. Lisa Goins, nurse practitioner with Couture Healthcare. If you like this video, like, subscribe, share, and a YouTube channel that you're looking for is Couture Healthcare. And thank you very much.